We are already into the start of April 2023. Hopefully you managed to survive the onslaught of April Fool's Day jokes. But something that isn't an April Fool's Day joke is the brand new Home Assistant release of 2023.4, which includes multi-server support, template macros, new template functions, and some new dashboard upgrades. If you remember a few months ago, we started to see some new cards and a new design language start to appear in Home Assistant. And then since then, we've been getting new dashboard cards and UI elements start to appear and get introduced. This month sees us with quite a few new dialogue options for using those new designs, including for alarms, covers, and fans, and also new options for the tile card for alarms and fans too. Let's start with the tile card first, as that makes the most sense. The tile card, which is a very versatile card that can be used for loads of different types of controls, now has support for alarms and fans as a feature. This means that now when you go over and select an alarm entity, for example, and add the alarm feature, it will now show the buttons for the alarm modes that you have enabled, giving you this nice clean toggle for each mode. And if you bring up the more dialog option, you will see the design has now been revamped into the new style. You will notice that if you hit the disarm action, it will bring up a pop-up for the keypad, which is nice, rather than the really old style keypad that is always on display. I'm a very big fan of this new design. The tile card also supports fans now too. If you add a fan to the tile card, it will now show you the controls for fan speed, either as individual buttons or as a percent slider, depending on how your fan works. If you open up the more dialogue option for this once again, you will see a familiar and consistent control option. Covers also have a new dialogue too. The tile card already had support for covers from a previous update, but now it has a matching more info dialogue, which will change depending on which options are available for your cover, if you have tilt, up and down, etc. Next up, I wanna shout out a feature that isn't part of Home Assistant release per se, but it is part of the whole Home Assistant ecosystem, and that is that the Android Home Assistant app now supports multiple servers natively inside of the app, a feature that iOS has had for a long time now and has finally came into the Android app. This allows you to change between different Home Assistant servers all in the same app without having to log out and log in each time. This is really useful if you have multiple servers such as one at your house and one at your parents' house or maybe a summer house, camper van, or maybe just a test instance. Nice. There's also a new native app for Windows 11 that can be downloaded through the Amazon App Store, and this allows you to collect sensors and interact with your Windows PC through an official Windows app. Though be aware that this is a preview at the moment, so bugs are to be expected. Back to Home Assistant itself, we also got quite a few new template options in this release too. The first one is actually a really cool one, macros are now supported in templates. This is a really cool feature if you are into doing advanced things with templates and basically it allows you to create repeatable and reusable templates once and then reuse them throughout your Home Assistant instance. This is great if you frequently create templates and are having to keep copying and pasting the same code for other similar templates. Basically, you just define a template macro once inside of the new custom templates folder and then you can call that macro whenever you are creating templates going forward, allowing you to quickly create similar templates. And the really cool thing is, is if you need to modify that template going forward, you just change it in that one place and it will be changed in all of your templates that use that macro. Neat. There's also three new functions available in templates now too. The first one can check if an entity is hidden or not inside of Home Assistant. And this would be useful, for example, if you have a template that gets a list of all of the lights in your house, you could use this to filter out any hidden lights, since often we have little light entities on devices that aren't really related to your house lights, you might hide them. This would be a really useful template for that purpose. The second function is the area function, which can return a list of all of the areas you have configured in your house, which might be useful for feeding that list into a second function. The final new function is the has a value function, and this allows you to test if an entity has an unavailable or unknown state, which I know for me personally will be very useful. Finally, if you like to use for loops in your templates, break and continue are now supported inside of those for loops, 
which should let you make your templates more efficient. Next up, if you are a blueprint maker, and if you are, thank you, there is now a new selector that allows you to provide a fixed value, such as an enabled state, inside of your blueprints, and you can also now better filter devices and entity filters by passing in a list of filters rather than a single condition, as was previously the case. Finally, as we've come accustomed to getting these days, it seems, we can expect to see even more speed improvements, reduced disk I.O. and quicker startup times from improvements made to the database, which is amazing to see as always. As for the little things this month, the real link integration gets supercharged with even more settings, sensors, and controls available for real link devices, as many of you saw in my real link doorbell review. The Spotify integration now supports podcast playback, which is a nice addition. Locks are now supported with the Matter integration. ESP Home supports pairing Bluetooth devices. And finally, TP-Link Omada integration now supports updating of entities. As for new integrations this month, for the first time in as long as I can remember, I think we actually have no new integrations and either do we have any new integrations migrated into the UI, either from YAML. I guess everyone was just working super hard on everything else that there was no time to add new integrations this month. As for breaking changes, there is a larger list than we've seen in previous months that might look a little bit scary, but none of them look major at all from what I can see and are mostly older deprecated stuff that has been warned about previously, or there are just other minor changes. As always, just make sure to have a read through and check any that might be applicable to you before hitting that update button. And that is about it for this month. A little bit of a smaller release, but still full of really cool stuff as always. My favorite new thing from this release is probably the new cards. In my opinion, the alarm card and also the thermostat card are two of the cards in Home Assistant that look the oldest to me and in the most need of refresh. So it's really cool that the alarm card has now been refreshed with that much cleaner design and hopefully we will see the thermostat card tackled soon. But let me know down in the comments which is your favorite new thing from this release. That macro one is also really cool too and I can see a lot of people getting a lot of use out of that one. But anyways, that's about it for this video. Please make sure to drop this video a like and get subscribed and I will see you in the next video.